Hello and welcome to this episode of Woman Fully Alive. I'm your host, Madeline Eames. And today what I'm going to dive into is healing that core wound of unworthiness, of feeling not good enough. And what is the true path? How can that pave our way towards our real aliveness, our authenticity? So there's a lot that we could say about trying to feel good enough. And there's all kinds of practices and tools that we can use and changing our thoughts and to help us to feel better. But I venture to say that those tools help us to feel better, perhaps momentarily, perhaps more consistently over time, but still within the box that you're living in. So I've been teaching online courses for a long, long time, and they started out with man managing anxiety, breathing tools, um, belief systems, changing your thoughts, all of these really powerful tools to help people to feel better where they are at. But what I'm finding with the women that I work with at, at, who are in midlife and, and beyond, and for myself, that we no longer settle for just feeling good enough within maybe the box that we're living in, maybe the relationships that, that we're in, and that we're actually tired of fixing, patching up, putting band-aids on something that always leads down to this core belief of feeling not good enough. And you know, the essence of feeling alive and powerful in your life is the knowing of enoughness, is knowing that there's no perfection here and it's perfect. The knowing that Feeling good enough does not always mean feeling good. And when we start to expand from perhaps the small self that we have been living in and trying to patch up and fix and temporarily breathe to regulate our nervous system, and we start to expand we, in our nervous system and in our life. So perhaps we start to speak up a little bit more. We start to move in a different way or we start to develop boundaries. One of the things that women bump up against is their shadows. And so I really want to dive into what does it mean to actually embrace good enoughness in this expansion into your aliveness and how we can reclaim what has been put in shadow that is part of this whole colorful multi-dimensional you. So here's an example. Many women when they start to speak up and say uh, shift patterns and say no and set boundaries will come back and say, but oh, I really disappointed someone. I had to let them down. I said no, or that person got really angry. And right there, we've got two shadows that have come to light, not to be patched up, not to be managed, but to be actually embraced and expanded through. So these are the potholes. So first of all, that person got angry. Yes, they did. They had anger in their body because they were used to you being a certain way and now you're not and now they're disappointed and now they're reacting. But what if anger was perfectly okay with you? What if anger was not considered something was bad or even wrong? And it was an only an indication that you were shifting and changing and expanding. So there's the shadow of anger that we embrace and we say, yes, I can be angry too. I have anger in my body. I can be angry 
And anger helps me in my life to protect myself and to set boundaries. Poof, expand, include anger in your life, in your aliveness. Another one that comes back is, well, I felt so guilty when I set that boundary or I, I, I don't even want to say set boundaries. When I just spoke my truth, I felt really guilty because I worried that I had um, hurt someone's feelings. So there's the guilt. In the effort to close down your throat and not speak your truth, it is simply the emotion of guilt that is being danced around that is trying to be avoided and you cut yourself off from your own aliveness. So when guilt rises, expand to include the guilt. Thank you, guilt, for showing me that this feels awkward, this feels uncomfortable, I feel guilty. That means something's shifting and changing. And it's okay for me to feel guilt in my body. It's okay to feel guilty. It's okay for me to include that in my experience to feel guilty. And as we start to reclaim what we consider to be bad or uncomfortable or not good or with the shadows, we see that we are so much more than that. We just expand to include it. And so as we begin this journey of expansion and expanding through our nervous systems, we, we bump up against these things. And how does this relate back to worthiness? Is I am worthy to feel everything. I am worthy to speak my truth and I am strong and worthy enough to manage the results in my body as I shift patterns. Another one that comes up is the, um, the shadow of greed. So I really desire something. I really want more. And there comes that voice that says, oh, but that's greedy. That has been a limiting shadow for so many women because of really strong conditioning around wanting more, uh, wanting to be more, wanting um, more money, uh, asking for a raise. And so what if we were, instead of trying to shift and contort our behavior so we don't appear greedy, what if we included it? What if we expanded to include greed and said, it's okay for me to be greedy because greedy itself is in the eye of the beholder. And I would say that if you're listening to this, it's okay for you to be what you call greedy. Now, I see the flip side of greedy as desire. Your yearning, your longing to be more, have more. What if you reframed it and included that, uh, uh, that sense of greed into your experience? Now, one of the, um, one of the biggest shadows that seems to come up for, for women and for myself included, it's all part of this archetype of being the good girl, being a good person so that people will like me, I'll be accepted, um, I'll be uh, approved of by the outside world. And that is very much a social and cultural um, conditioning. So what if it was okay to not be approved of? What if it was okay to not have validation? What if it was okay to have people judge you, even criticize you, because you know what they are, they are anyway. So why don't we walk into that and expand to include even that? Can you feel the freedom in that? And as we include that in our experience, we're saying that I am worthy enough, I am strong enough to withstand abandonment because I refuse to abandon myself. And if people don't like it when you refuse to abandon yourself, so they expect you to abandon yourself for them and they won't like it because they also have a core wound that they need you to not abandon them. Do you see what I mean? 
So in essence, you are just by virtue of, of who you are being now, you are shining a light on their shadows. Whether they choose to move through that or not, it's none of your business. You hope that they do, but their shadows of anger, their shadows of shame, their shadows of fear, that you're shifting and changing, and maybe they're not. Their shadows of abandonment, when she really, you know, is greedy and too big for her britches, maybe she won't like me anymore. So can you stand in your capacity and your resilience to allow these shadows to be included? Because you, my dear, are light and dark, your shadow and, and light. You are everything. And a real sense of worthiness, real sense of healing the core wound of worthiness is knowing that everything in your life has not only been chosen, but the obstacles that you come along are there for you. They're there for you to learn and expand through. So you no longer have to be afraid of anything. Because if something, if a real threat comes along, you're gonna act and, and fight, flight, freeze in the moment. And until that happens, everything in your life is presenting itself to you, for you, and through you. And that is where we start to take back our power because we know that if we speak up, we get shut down, we know that's, oh, that's something else for me to, to, to work through. That might mean ending a relationship. That might mean speaking up. That might mean healing in your body. Only you can know. Another um, shadow that comes up for women as they move through this process is the shadow of pride. I mentioned earlier being too big for your br britches. Oh, she's showing off. How did that shadow come about? Imagine, <clears throat> imagine if all little girls were told, be exactly who you are. Dance till your heart's content. Dance like nobody's watching. Sing because you have a voice. Write, create art. You know, wear that tutu wherever you want to go because you're beautiful and you're worthy just the way you are. But no, for some, you know, cultural reasons, girls had to become quiet, sit down, don't move, shut down your throat, shut down your voice, and behave. And there may have been boys out, who knows, fighting in the mud, and that was boys will be boys. But girls had an extra layer of conditioning, or should I say a different layer of conditioning. So what if when we saw other women being successful, we didn't judge them and we built them up, even if we didn't really agree with what they're doing or it didn't resonate with us, just you go girl, you've got something. And it's important that you express it. What if we did that for every woman in our life and we did it for ourselves? And when that shadow comes up of, oh, showing off, oh, you're too much. You just said, yeah, and I include that too. I include pride. I include too muchness. I include too, too loud, loudness because I can expand in my capacity. So when we reach these potholes, we don't work around them. We don't fall in them. We expand to include them and we include everything in our life. And this is the root to your own aliveness, not burying anything alive, allowing it, allowing the energy of every emotion, of every circumstance, and expanding to include it, knowing that you're worthy and you're already enough. So you don't really have to prove anything. Because a lot of what we do it was dancing around the shadows is so that we can present ourselves a certain way because we don't feel good enough. 
but what if every time you hit one, you just move through it and included it? It's completely uh, different um, energy. And this is where a true sense of worthiness comes from. And also in that authenticity comes our power. Because we're no longer having to pretend that we're somebody or something else. We are ourselves. And when you are yourself, there's really nothing that can trip you up. And that is true power. So we're aware of our nervous systems. We're aware that we can feel small. We can feel big. We can feel the helplessness of feeling like prey. We can feel the power of feeling uh, like a predator and everything in between. And that excites me because that's the beauty of being alive in this lifetime. It's a time to experiment. It's a time to put on different hats. It's a time to try this and then try that without fear or shame of looking stupid or embarrassing yourself. So this is what I really teach in, in my classes in uh, my Woman Fully Alive mentorship program. And if this is something that interests you, please leave me a comment below. I love seeing women start to embrace every part of themselves because the parts that have been buried are either parts that you've learned through your um, through your ancestors, you know, through your family or through society to bury and the world misses them. We miss them and we bring the subconscious up to the conscious and in that we become powerful in our bodies, our minds, our thoughts and our voices. All right, everyone, I hope this has been helpful. If you like this podcast, if you're enjoying it, then please like, um, subscribe to my channel, leave me a message below, and I will see you in the next episode.